Whew, already, already, already. Hi, hello, friends, new and old, and welcome to a new video. Uh, I am back with another sewing adventure. Basically, I want to create a whole outfit in less than two weeks. Um, so I started this Tuesday, the um the 20th i think to say the 20th of may no 20th was yesterday okay so today's friday today's friday the 21st of may which makes tuesday this is 20th 18th so i started this on the 18th of may on that tuesday um and I want to try and have it done by the 30th of May, which is Sunday. My plan is I bought this pattern uh, from Truly Victorian, it's the 1908 Countryside Blouse, um, which is terrifies me immensely because I have not sewn a blouse shirt before. Literally the only thing that I've sewn are skirts. And this is also the first one of using like a legit, legit pattern. So like I had to, so I bought the e-pattern version and so I just printed it on 34 pieces of paper and taped them all together and then cut out the shapes. I just cut out like the whole, all of the sizes. So I went um, A through N and then um, I have, just started like slowly cutting down the patterns to roughly the size that I think I'll need based on some little measurements that I uh, did. So this is really terrifying. There's also quite a few pieces that I don't quite understand how they all go together. But I will say this little like um, sleeve placket is very cute. I just think it's really cute and tiny. So there's a lot that goes on with that pattern and I have not started that whatsoever, but uh, I'm also doing a sort of chemise undershirt um, and both of those two things, so the chemise and the blouse are gonna be made out of uh, some unbleached muslin that I picked up at Joann's. Um, I only got two and a half yards of it, but I had about two and a half yards left over from uh, the unbleached muslin I bought to do my petticoat with. So it's roughly this, it's the same sort of muslin. Um, so I should have enough. I should have more than enough to comfortably get this, the shirt done. I am quite scared. I haven't started it yet. But while I was at Joann's, I found this really lovely red uh, cotton fabric. It's just 100% cotton. Really lovely, really nice and light, um, pretty thin. So I had the thought of doing a sort of pinafore apron dress because like I mentioned in my Whacking Scare video, I absolutely love these apron dresses and I really, really want one. And honestly, when I saw this red cotton, I thought it would be really lovely for like a spring, summertime sort of skirt dress thing. So I don't have a pattern for that. So I'm just kind of making it up along with the chemise. I have no idea how to really do it. I did start this, so Tuesday, uh, Tuesday I cut out the skirt panels for the dress. I have since sewn them all together and I fell down the inside seams mostly. I have a little bit left to do. Like I have the seam around the pocket opening and about, here it is, and then the other half of the pockets, placket, placket slit. Um, to fell down, but I decided I didn't really want to do that. So instead I started hemming the skirt by hand. So um, I've been doing that. It's taken quite a long time. Um, it's kind of mindless work. Like I've just had Disney Pixar movies on all day and I've just been working away at the skirt bit. 
um because i've been also procrastinating on how to do like on how i want to do the bib front and then the straps um but that will get done eventually at some point so what have i done so far so yes so i have the skirt bit mostly done it is mostly done at this point um i'm just going to gather I'm just going to run a uh, one strand gathering thread along the top to be able to cinch it down to my waist um, because just um, with this cotton it's very easy to see stitching like this is the the hem here and you can very clearly see the holes that my needle has made on the outside to so I think pleats would be a bit too much for this fabric. Um, I think it's just a bit too thin and I think I could get the most, it, it would be most effective to gather it. Um, at least that's what I'm justifying to myself. I'm also gonna try and machine gather. Uh, right, so again, so like the only proper pattern that I am using is the one for the blouse because there is no heckin' way I would be able to come up with a blouse pattern without a pattern. Um, but the chemise I'm kind of doing, I'm trying, I'm trying to do without a pattern because, you know, I'm not doing like a proper historical chemise or shift or anything. I want, I'm trying to make it kind of more of a really loose uh, tank top in a way. And yeah, so technically I made two. I made two of these chemises. The first one was bad. Um, it was a good, it was a decent length. The armholes were pretty okay. However, it was just way too uh, tight. It wasn't wide enough. And I think the problem was is that I just took flat measurements off of a shirt that I really liked the fit of, forgetting that that, that shirt has spandexy elastic sort of stuff in it um and my muslin does not my the muslin is very rigid so i need to make it with a lot of extra width to you know be able to get it on it on and off like i literally had to cut and tear at the seam to be able to get the what i'm now calling my mock-up off so that's gonna be used as, as a like spare fabric for these smaller pieces um, just so I can try and use it up and not waste my muslin. So this video is going to be my attempt at sewing basically three articles of clothing in less than two weeks. However, relatively speaking, I think they can be pretty easily done. I know, um, like hand finishing the skirt is gonna be the thing that takes the longest because I know for like the bib front I'm going to use two layers of the cotton so that way I can just turn you know sew the panels together turn it inside out and be done um, and then just press the the seams flat so they're nice and crisp and do that um, I don't know how I'm gonna attach the bib front to the waistband I don't know how to do the straps for the pinafore um, because I'm just gonna have one center back closure at the back of the skirt where it's gonna be this really nice little brown button that I found at Joann's um, and then like a hook and eye um, I just don't want to do two hooks and eyes and I figure I can probably figure out how to use the button hole thing on my sewing machine because that might be useful um and then i do have a bunch of tiny that's right i also have a bunch of tiny buttons that i have to do on the shirt so if i can figure out how to do the buttonhole thing on my machine i think that'll make my shirt a lot easier yeah i am gonna try and do a lot of this by machine i know i stitched up my chemise by machine uh, but I think I'm going to finish it by hand just because it's easy. I know there's a thing called a French seam. I don't know if I have to get like a proper foot on my machine for that or how to do it and I don't care to really figure that out so I might just hand fill a couple seams.
Uh, but you know, that's honestly okay. I don't mind that at all. I actually kind of, I really like it. Yeah, I'm gonna see. I know I'm definitely gonna have the dress done by the 30th. The shirt is the biggest concern. Um, but again, it's only the 21st, so I do have, I have nine days, kind of eight at this point. It's also kind of later in the afternoon and I've been working all day. But however, however, I have about eight and a half days, I'd say, to get this project done. And I have more time than I did for my vlog. So I'm hoping, I think I might get close, if not there. We're gonna see how it goes. I hope to be able to get it done. I hope you enjoy the journey. So, yeah. I should get back to sewing. Also, I watched one of the movies I put on today was Brave and it just, as I was sitting there sewing, I just imagined making Merida's blue dress that she has because I really like it. It's really pretty, I think. I think technically the dress is called a kirtle. Any like history person out there who knows if it is or not, and if it's not, please tell me. But to my very limited knowledge, it looked like a kirtle and it looked like something that would be really fun to like kind of adapt a little um, and use for like whenever I go to my first Renaissance festival which I'm really, really excited about. And I really, really want to be able to go to my first Renaissance festival in clothing that I make. But that is a thing for another thing. Right now, I am making a pinafore dress and a 1908 shirt and a chemise. So let's get to that. Also, it's very warm today and ugh, kind of gross outside, but my throat's really dry, so I wanna stop talking and get back to work anyways, so. <sighs> Peace. So it is now Wednesday, the 26th of May. Um, I have actually a fully functioning, technically fully finished skirt now. Um, and I love it so very dearly. It's so swooshy and big. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so technically I only have, I have like less than four days to finish the whole outfit. I now realize that I definitely will not make that time. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I have had work, so I didn't have all of my time to be able to dedicate to sewing, which I think if maybe I did, I would have, I feel like I would have gotten like very close by now. I feel like I would have been very close to actually sewing the dress, the chemise, and the shirt. But as it is, I think the dress is the only reasonable thing that I can finish by this Sunday. So that's unfortunate, but I am very happy. I really, really love this skirt. I love the color. Um, I spent literally all day Friday, um, finishing up the seams and hemming the skirt and even took through the weekend to do so. It took forever. Um, but I did it. I actually uh, used my sewing machine to run a gathering thread. So I just used my machine on the longest stitch setting and ran a whole line at the half inch seam allowance mark. Um, I only ran one line because with the machine I am definitely not going to get parallel lines whatsoever. Um, so then I was just very, very careful at pulling the thread to uh, gather the fabric down to the waistband. And I have this really cute little brown button in the back. Um, I do have a hook and bar slightly below it, but it's the same brand of buttons that's on my Harry Styles cardigan. So, but those buttons were definitely much too 
orange, I felt like having a true brown button would really stand out nicely for the dress. Um, so I still have the apron front and the straps to do, and I haven't quite figured out exactly how I mean to attach the apron front to the skirt itself. So I have it completely finished. So technically I could be done right now and have a very lovely skirt. However, I really, really, really want a pinafore apron dress and I have a lot of red fabric left. So I should do that. But just kind of going it over in my head, the only way I could really think of putting this together was to have the skirt completely done separately and then doing the apron front and straps as a piece and then attaching. How I'm gonna do that, I don't know. I don't have enough buttons to do uh, buttons on the bottom of the straps to, so that they're detachable from the waist. So I am gonna have to sew them down and I do also want them to cross at the back. So I want to make sure that they lay as flat as possible. Um, so there's no weird uh, rolling or bubbling or wrinkling that's going on there that they can just lay nice and flat. So it's just getting, uh, it's just figuring out the shape and size of both the apron front and the straps. Um, I think I'm gonna make the apron front first. It makes sense because um, then I'm gonna f uh, be able to figure out how high it sits and then I should be able to just take a strip of fabric, fold it actually basically about the same way as I did with my waistband which is I folded in a half inch on all sides for the seam allowance and then I just folded widthwise. I folded widthwise um, so that it was this nice, nice flat uh, waistband. You probably can't see it, I realize. So one thing I did that I actually am really, really glad it worked is that I attached the waistband to the skirt with one row of stitching with my machine. So I folded and pressed in all of my seam allowances on the waistband and I just ran one top stitch all, as close to the edge of the waistband as I possibly could all along the skirt, catching the half inch of extra fabric of the skirt inside the waistband. So I'd say I'm pretty successful. There's a bit on the front where I accidentally slipped a little too high so it sometimes uh, folds up a little but it's not the end of the world for me but I wanted to come and chat because it's been a while um, and I've been working really really hard but also it's like I'm not I'm not gonna be able to get it done in time the whole outfit which really kind of sucks but if I can at least get the dress bit done which should be possible because I should be able to do ev most everything by machine now. As much as I don't really want to because I'm not really familiar with the machine, I'm a lot more comfortable hand sewing. However, I don't have the time that hand sewing requires. So I think what I'm going to do to attach the waistband, I've been thinking about this. I don't know if I'll go through it with, with it. Um, but once I finish the apron front, I'll place the bottom edge of the apron up against the top edge of the waistband and then sew a piece of waist tape in between so that it's attached basically through the waist tape and then yeah see if that works so there'll be there will be visible top stitching on the very front of this dress. There will be a line of top stitching on the apron bit and there's gonna be a line of top stitching on the waistband bit. So what I'm gonna do is attempt my waistband idea. Um, and then I think this is also how I'm going to attach then uh, the straps to the waistband is I'm gonna do a, a very similar, if not the exact same process um, because that way I can completely finish up all the edges on the apron front and the straps and then it could uh, look nice on the outside. I, I want it to be as neat as possible on the inside because, you know, I want to. Also, I'm waiting for my previous video now, by the time that you're watching this, of re 
starting and finishing my very first knitting project and kind of a look into how I'm editing videos. So that vlog, I am currently waiting for it to export out of iMovie so I can start uploading it to YouTube. Um, I did not expect this video to be a month late, but work got very crazy for like four weeks. So I was, I didn't have the energy or time really to do anything for like four weeks. So that's why that video is super duper late and I should stop procrastinating because I have a dress to finish. I in fact did not stop procrastinating for two and a half days and ended up having basically all of the sewing of the dress to do on the last day. But hey, we did it. I, I did it. I, I did it. Yes. But anyways, I honestly love this dress so 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 much this it's just it's amazing it's a dream come true for me it's my very first dress and i love it it spins so well it's so big and floofy and i just adore it i barely ever want to take it off it's amazing you know it's not perfect there are some things that I need to fix for next time. You know, not all my sewing was straight and maybe I could have fit things together better, but I am so happy. It's amazing. I have gotten so many compliments wearing it and I don't know, it, it's all so nice, but I just have no idea how to take compliments. But anyways, I really love this dress so, so much. And if you are even thinking about making one of these dresses, do it. If you haven't thought of making one of these dresses, do it. They're amazing. Okay, <laughs> bye.